I'm Nathan Jeffers, and today we're going to talk about the simplest way for you to start editing in Adobe Premiere CC. I've transferred all of my footage from my camera to a footage folder in my Editing Basics project here. It's sitting in this folder, and we're going to open up Adobe Premiere. Now that Premiere has loaded to this splash screen, I'm just going to click on the New Project button, and I'm going to title this Editing Basics. And I'm going to save this project in the Project Files folder of my Editing Basics project that's on the desktop. So I'm going to click on Browse, go to my desktop, Editing Basics, and my Project Files. The first thing you want to do is just import your footage into Premiere. So we're going to go up to File, Import, and then find the location of our media. In this case, it's on the desktop, Editing Basics, Footage, and I have this folder, Scott Pilgrim Picture Show 63017. So I'm going to select all of that footage to import. I'll select the first one, scroll all the way down to the last video clip, hold down Shift, and click on the last one. That will select all the footage, and I hit Import. Now it's going to import all that footage for me. Now that all your footage is imported into Premiere, I like to sort it by name. That's usually not the default for some reason in Premiere when you have it in your icon view. So I'll click on this little double triangled sort icons button and click on name. It's going to sort all of my footage by the name. Usually that's the order in which they were filmed. So it gives me a better way of grouping all of my footage. Um, so the easiest way to start editing your footage is just by clicking and dragging them over onto the timeline over here. The timeline is where you're going to build your edit, your final video. So what it's actually done behind the scenes is created a new timeline. You'll see a duplicate here, what looks like a duplicate of the footage, but it actually has a little sequence icon here. And what we can do is just simply single click on the name and then instead of naming it exactly the same name as the clip, we'll just name it Scott Pilgrim Picture Show, the name that we want our actually fin final video to be named. I'll hit return, and now we have a project that's just Scott Pilgrim Picture Show with our clip inside of it. And now we can just start adding more clips. So say we want this one to be next, and then finally this clip. Once we have all of our footage that we want on the timeline, or at least our first few shots, I'm going to show you how to use simply two tools to start editing. The first one is the selection tool. The shortcut is V. And this is the most basic kind of tool in Premiere. So if you want to move a clip from left to right, um, and actually if you want to shorten a clip, you can use the selection tool. The way that you do that is in Premiere, um, a lot of the tools are context sensitive, meaning they will change depending on what you are hovering over. So if I hover over the beginning of this clip, you'll see that it turns into a little bracket with an arrow next to it pointing right. That means I'm able to start trimming the beginning of this clip. So I can click and drag to the right, and now I am trimming the beginning of this clip. Maybe I want to trim it to the beginning of the shot where there's a little bit of movement. And you see I even get a little bit of a preview of where that shot is going to start. I can move my playhead over and sure enough that's where that shot starts. I can play and maybe I want the shot to stop right there. I can actually hover over using the selection tool to the end of the clip and do the same thing, trim the end of the clip all the way to where my playhead is stopped. Now I have a single clip that's exactly the length that I want, and I can move it into place. The other way to make cuts in the timeline is to use the razor tool, shortcut C. So if I have a shot that I want to cut the beginning and end of in the middle here. Say I have a pan down shot to the location of the building. I can make a cut where I want the footage to begin and end. So if I want it to begin at the sky here, I will make a cut simply by single clicking on the footage. And that's made a cut. 
and I'll press play to the end, and that seems good. And I'm going to make another cut. Now I'm going to switch over to my selection tool using the V shortcut, select all the footage that I don't want, and hit delete. Now I can even select the space that I don't want here on the timeline and hit delete. I can even select space between clips and hit delete. That'll make sure that there's no black frames between clips. Let's quickly even edit this clip using the just the selection tool as well. And we are going to set our in and out points here and move this over. So now that's the simplest way to start editing. We've imported our footage onto the hard drive from our camera. We've opened up Premiere, saved the project. We've imported our footage into the project, put our clips into the timeline, and just using the selection and razor tool, we've started to make our first edit. This method is really great for quick and basic projects, but if you're doing something larger, you might wanna consider this other method of editing opening footage in the source monitor and selecting from there. So the way that we start editing that way is we will double click on a piece of footage and that will open that footage into the source monitor. Now I'm gonna do a longer video that goes over the, the basics of the interface, but to quickly go over it, we have our source monitor that's tied to our footage down here um, and we have our program monitor that's tied to our playhead over here on our timeline. Think of the playhead as a little eyeball that's looking straight down, and whatever it sees is going to show up in the program monitor. So if I hover over this clip, this piece of footage, that frame is going to show up in the program monitor. Opening footage up in the source monitor allows us to select exactly the point that we want and import only that part of the footage into our timeline. So let's play through this shot and find what we want. That looks like a pretty good pan establishing the location here. So I'm going to make an in by clicking the mark in button, shortcut is I, hit play, and stop where I want it to stop, and set an out point. Now I can simply click and drag the thumbnail here down onto the timeline, and that will bring in just that part of the footage. This is a lot cleaner way of editing rather than just dragging everything onto the timeline, but it does take a little bit more time. Uh, some things to keep in mind is that when you create your first sequence, when you drag over your clip to the empty sequence over here, um, it actually creates a sequence with the same settings as your original footage. So if you use two different types of cameras that maybe are at different settings, um, you will want to be aware of that. If a piece of footage is a lot smaller or a different resolution, um, it will look different and you'll have to respond to that accordingly. Say, for instance, you import an image into your project and it's not the exact size of your sequence, it's going to uh, be a little bit smaller. So let's import one right now. I have a poster of Scott Pilgrim. So I'm going to go to Desktop, Editing Basics, Images, and then this is the poster for the film. I'm going to import that and then click and drag it onto my timeline. And what you can see is that is a very low resolution image. I want that to fill the screen. So I will right click on the clip and then select set to frame size. If you have an image or a piece of footage that is a different size as your sequence, you can always right click and use the set to frame size uh, shortcut as a way to match everything up together. Another thing to be aware of as you're editing your videos, sometimes you want to have people talking and then have footage appear over the top of them. So for instance, if you're editing a news package like this story, uh, you will have an interview and then you might have some B-roll over the top as the uh, interviews are going on. So I shot some interviews here and I'm going to bring this particular interview into the timeline and I will find a good soundbite from this first interview. So let's go ahead and listen to this interview. I loved it. It was so 
Yeah, honestly, the lights were amazing. I like that sound bite, so I'm going to use my razor tool with the shortcut C and make a cut at the end of the sound bite and then move back over to the beginning of the sound bite and make a cut. So I'm going to switch back to the selection key using the shortcut V and then delete the footage that I don't want. Now I have my one sound bite, but I want to put some B-roll over the top of that. Maybe some footage of the actual event. So let's find some footage of people enjoying the, the film. That looks great. But I just want to bring in the video. So I've double clicked on this, opened it up in the source monitor, and I'm going to use my in and out method of editing. So I'm going to set an in point here and hit play using spacebar. And that seems like a good moment. Set an out point. And now instead of clicking and dragging on this thumbnail, I'm only going to bring in the video by clicking and dragging on the video film strip icon here and bring this onto video track two. So now, while I have them speaking. I loved it. It was so, yeah, honestly, the lights were amazing. Now I hear them, but I am seeing the footage that is on the top. Again, I use the metaphor of the playhead as an eyeball looking straight down. So if you look at the timeline, I have a clip of the audience on top of the interview. And so that is going to be the image that shows up in our final video during that segment. And I can extend it, move it around wherever I want it to be. And I can continue adding more clips in this manner. So if you had a lot of different sound bites and interviews, you could have all of them be on video track one, and then all of your B-roll is on video track two. That's another great way to keep organized. So this has been a very, very basic introduction into Premiere Pro CC. I'm going to do a much longer, more in-depth tutorial in the future. Um, so watch out for that. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'm Nathan Jeffers. And thanks for watching.